Looking for help for a dynasty football league, a normal NFL fantasy football league, or just a normal football fan and excited for the NFL draft? Well, here we go. We're starting our NFL scouting reports today. Let's get this thing going. A lot of information in this video. We're going to have little tiny chapters and sections that you guys can click around in in the comment sections if you guys don't want to watch the entire video. But if you're interested in dynasty football or just a normal football league or, again, just a simple football fan and excited because you think your team's going to draft some of these players, be sure to stay tuned. The series starts today. We got a lot of discuss. And again, you're going to want to watch the entire video for the best analysis possible. But if not, and you want to skip around for certain players that you may be interested in drafting in, be sure to check the comment section and click to the guy that you want to see. Let's hop right into this thing. What, Eddie? What, Eddie, son? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is Nick from Thought Life Sports. Today, we're going over the 2023 NFL edge rushing scouting analysis. Boy, oh boy, do we have a lot of edge rushers here today to go through. How many sheets of notes? One sheet of notes. Two sheets of notes. Three sheets of notes. Four sheets of notes. Five sheets of notes. Six sheets of notes. Seven sheets of notes, eight sheets of notes, eight sheets of notes. They're loaded. It's packed. Got a lot to talk about with these guys. It's going to be a long one. This is probably going to be around an hour if I had to guess. I'm going to try to be as fast as possible. So I'm not going to keep you up all day. At the very end, we'll do a uh, fan questions. Again, as I said in the beginning of the video, use the timestamps in the comment section and the chapters to be able to get to the guy that you want to see. All right, now let's hop into this. Again, if you guys have any questions, be sure to comment in the comment section below. Let's go right now. All right, here are my 2023 edge rushers. Here's my track record. Okay, we go all the way back to 2019 with the edge rushers. That year I had Nick Bosa 1, Josh Allen 2, Montez Sweat 3, Cleveland Furl 4, Brian Burns 5, and Jack pa Jack Eye Polite 6. Now again, I know we look back at this now, and again, a lot of people hold their uh, track records close and tight to themselves so that nobody shows when they were right and when they were wrong. Nobody wants to show you that, you know, they had Brian Burns low. You know, I'm willing to show you I had him low. But I'll tell you something. Some people had Josh Allen one, you know, so some, just some crazy stuff that year. You know, we saw Cleveland Furl get taken fourth overall by the Raiders, okay? I mean, again, teams value people differently. Everyone values somebody differently. But here's my ranking. And I got to say, I kind of, you know, I, I give myself a B plus to an A minus here. Nick Bosa was number one. After Bosa, it's either Brian Burns or Josh Allen. Take your pick there. And then it's Montez Sweat. Then it's Clee Furl. Then it's Jack I play. So the only guy I truly missed on here was Brian Burns. And I didn't even miss on him. I, you know, I don't have the 2019 video up. I don't, again, we didn't make videos in 2019. We did make videos in 2020. And again, I think I kind of, for the most part, maybe you guys disagree, but I feel like I almost aced this one out of the ballpark too. You know, Chase Young, number one. You know, everyone's number one. Julian Okawara, number two. I love Julian Okawara. Clayvon Chase on three. You know, and Yeter Gross Matos, four. You know, everyone else really had A.J. Epinesa ranked number two or three. I was very low on A.J. Epinesa, and I stand by my decision there. You know, I feel like Chase Young is number one. I feel like Julian Okawara is probably number two. And then, honestly, all three of these guys, Epinesa, Gross Matos, and Chase Hahn, all are, you know, in a very similar ballpark. None of them really panned out that well. Although, I, you know, I still like Yeter Gross Matos, to be honest with you. I like him. You know, I like them coming out, too. I was very high on him compared to everybody else. Chase Hahn, you know, everyone was high on him, but he didn't really pan out. Epinesa, everyone was high on him. I wasn't very high on him. Terrell Lewis, Curtis Weaver, I don't even know where the hell they went. But I know for a fact I didn't like Curtis Weaver. Now, in 2021, Jalen Phillips, number one. I stand by my decision there, too. You know, and there's still a lot to be played with 2021 here. Joseph O. Sign, number two. You know, we'll have to wait and see. 
You know, I had him number two. We'll see if he pans out to, you know, be there or not. The guy that I, I missed on was Gregory Rousseau. Gregory Rousseau should be number one or two. You know, and again, I'm showing you, I messed up. But Joseph Osai, I had him ranked a little high, you know, but, and again, there he is. I mean, he is number two. You know, Quiddy Pay is number three. Gregory Russo, number four. Quincy Roche, number five. Patrick Jones, number six. A lot of these guys, you guys don't even know. The one guy I screwed up on, and again, no one even goes as low as Aziz Ojolari. You know, I, I I don't mind Ojolari at all, to be honest with you guys. I really don't. You know, and, and I did have him lower than I should have. So, again, that's that. You know, we'll have to wait to see what happens here. But, again, for the most part, you know, I'm happy with my rankings in 2021. You know, I messed up in some areas. Everybody messes up. You know, nobody shows you their true track record because they want to hide it. They want to hide it. This is the truth. 2022. All right, Nick, what did you do there? Well, here's my list. You know, Jermaine Johnson, number one. I still stand by that decision. He is the best edge rusher. He can rush off the edge, and he's great in the run game. He can do a little bit of everything at the edge position requires. I stand by it. Maybe I'll be wrong, but I stand by it. Aiden Hutchinson, number two. Aiden Hutchinson had a very good season this year. I loved Aiden Hutchinson. He was my number one for a very long time. But again, I, I think running game specifically, too, Jermaine Johnson really outweighs him. And I feel like Aiden, you know Jermaine Johnson is a hell of a pass rusher as well. So again, between those two things, I got Jermaine Johnson still very high on my board. We'll see if he gets an opportunity this year. All right. That's that. Who's next? Well, Kayvon Thibodeau. What? Tayvon, Kayvon Thibodeau. Yeah, Kayvon Thibodeau was the best, in my opinion, pass rusher in the entire draft last year. Pass rusher. Man, when he wanted to play and he got a good jump, which he can do every single time, damn, he was good. He was a hell of a player. You know, especially in college, this was. Last year in the NFL, he did all right. I think he'll be fine. Trayvon Walker, hell of a you know versatile player. We'll see. Really raw. George Karloftis I loved. Sam Williams was all right. David Ojabo, I think he could be special. He was hurt last year. I think he could have been one of the best you know rushers in the entire draft class. I could have had him ranked in my top three. you know, But his injury lowered him down the board. Boye Mafi, MyJ Sanders, Arnold Abichetti, Nick Bonito, Logan Hall, and Drake Jackson for 13. All right. There's my track record. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Here we go. Here's my grading skill. I grade them off of five things. Their run stuffing ability, their pass rushing ability, their hit power, their pursuit, and their fight. And this is my complete analysis after film study and the combine. Now, again, these are the five categories. This is look very similar to my defensive tackle rankings. I do the same grade skill for both of them. I grade all of them on the same categories. So let's hop right into this thing. Here's the first guy earned a 77 as a grade. Will Anderson. Six foot three, two fifty three, thirty three inch reach, four six forty. Definitely a slower four than what most people like to say. Here are the notes. This kid's a really smart football player. He plays really smart at the edge position, always making sure he keeps his contain. He does not allow the running back to get outside of him. He may be one of the better run defenders I have seen in a while, especially at the edge position. This is not to discredit his pass rushing ability, because he has really good bend of the hips. To be able to dip and rip around the tackles. Again, that's the dip and rip move. I love it. He has good pursuit speed to track down running backs, even when they're running away from him. He does a good job blowing back linemen and then ripping back across their faces when Anderson has the lineman off balance. So again, what does he do? He blows them back and then he rips across their face. When he blows them back, the lineman's off balance. Then he hits it with a nice rip move, and it, it's it's beautiful. So that shows you the size, the speed, the finesse, and the power. It's just all there. It's all there. He does a great job staying square to the ball carrier on options and shows his IQ to always stay in good positioning. He also uses a swim move on occasion to go around the outside. Most of the time he is rushing, but there are times where he will play a quarterback spy or even drop into coverage. He also tends to line up decently wide on the line of scrimmage. He can be a good player at the next level. So what are his strengths? He's smart. You know, he plays with good contain. He's a good run defender. He has good bend of the hips. He does the dip and rip move. You know, he rips and then dips, you know, or vice versa. Dips and rips. You know, it all comes at once. Good pursuit speed. He does a good job blowing back linemen. And when he blows them back, then you see him hit the rip move, which is really smooth. Because he hits them, knocks them off balance, 
Boom. Swipes across the face. Hits him with a dip and rip. And he stays square to the ball carrier, and he has a variety of moves. He doesn't just do dip move and rip move. You know, you gotta, gotta, gotta. Spin, swim, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Doesn't really have a weakness. You know, there's a lot in between, a lot of strengths, not really any weaknesses. Here's his breakdown. You're more than to take a look at that. You know, I'm not going to go on and on about this. But again, the one thing about Will Anderson is this. A little bit slow for my liking, 40 time-wise. But again, his film was pretty damn good. Here's the next guy. Earned a 77 as a grade as well. Tyree Wilson. Let's see what we got. Six foot six, 271, 35 inch reach. 35 inch reach. Those are long arms. Long arms. Long arms. Let's see what we got here. This kid's an interesting prospect to watch on tape. I think he has a ton of untapped potential. First, he looks huge on film. Long body and long arms. In the running game, he does a great job engaging with the linemen, but then shedding them, blo shedding the block as the running back approaches him. He can line up in the inside or the outside. He's willing and capable of fighting through double teams as well. Wilson is able to defeat blocks in order to get to the running back. He also does a great job chasing down the quarterback. I think there needs to be a work done in his pass rushing technique as he can learn new moves and get, you know, learn new moves and ways to get to the quarterback. But he is very gifted in size and arm length. I think he will always be a productive player considering his versatility and length. If he cannot be developed as a pass rusher, then he may not be one of those flashy type guys that was flat, you know, a real flashy name around the league. But he will always be a good run defender. And me personally, I would bet on this kid. 6'6", 271, 35 inch reach, did not run a 40. Big guy, big guy, 6'6", 271, long arms, long arms, 35 inch reach. Great in the run game, fights through double teams, good pursuit speed to the quarterback. And he has a lot of untapped potential, which means that he can be, he can blossom into something to be really great. A weakness is also untapped potential. Can he get to where he needs to be? Okay, so again, there's potential there. Can he live up to it? We'll wait and see. Uh, you know, I would want to coach this guy. I like him a lot. The one thing about Tyree Wilson, though, is, is this. Reminds me of Chandler Jones. Because Chandler Jones has his really long arms. And Chandler Jones knows how to play with them. Man, if the Raiders could get a hold of Tyree Wilson and let him learn under Chandler Jones. Oh, my God. Would that be a great thing for them? Here's his breakdown. And we'll take a look at that. Here's that guy. Felix Anudike Uzama. Earned a 75 as a grade. Six foot three, 255, 33 inch reach. Here are his notes. This kid has a great dip and rip move. Every once in a while, he pulls out a jump dip to rip move. So he kind of leaps, a little tiny jump into the dip and rip. And sometimes that works good as well. That really frees him up around the edge. He takes a nice straight angle to the quarterback. He consistently beats double teams in college and is still able to make an impact. He also shows the swim move on occasion. He has a variety of moves and defeats multiple, multiple blockers. It's every play this guy's defeating a blocker. Chases down some screen passes and makes plays all game on. This guy is a football player. He finds ways to make plays. All right, so what are his, you know, strengths? Dip and rip move. Again, really good. Good angle to the quarterback. He beats double teams. He has a variety of moves he uses, and he chases down screen plays. Again, there's not really too many weaknesses in his game. You know, some of these guys, I could question their straight line speed, but some of them didn't run 40s, you know, and their tape did not look that bad, you know. So, again, really no weaknesses here. Here's his breakdown. You're going to want to take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Derek Hall, okay? Six foot two, 239, 34-inch reach, all right? What are his notes? This kid's a raw prospect, but boy, am I excited to see what he can do. I think he could tear up the combine. I really do. Now, again, I don't think he even participated at the combine, to be honest. If I'm in the NFL and I have a guy that may fall down the board, I can take a shot on a player. This may be my guy, Okay? So, again, if I'm in the NFL and I have a guy and they fall down my board, you know, it's falling, 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 falling. And, and, and this guy, you know, there's a few guys there and this guy's still on the board. This is probably the guy I'm taking over a lot of guys because, man, he could be special. 
This should be a coach's dream selection. He has all the physicals I think you could want. Now, again, height and weight, not really. He has pretty long arms, but, man, I'll tell you, he seemed so quick on film, it was ridiculous. Now, once this guy gets drafted in the NFL, it is a coach's job to coach this kid up. Looks like a big guy on film. I was slightly wrong. Now, now I'm talking to you guys. I'm slightly wrong. I thought he was going to be bigger than 6'2", 239. But he does have those long arms. He seems very quick. He can fake an outside rush move and shoot the inside gap. He has a great rip move around the edge, but also pairs it up with a great bend. He can blow back the tackle in bowl rushes. He just seems like an all-around physical specimen. He does not quit and continues to fight on rushes. He does a good job shedding blocks and quickly attacks the running back. I would not prefer him in coverage, but he is able to do it as well. He would be great on quarterback contains or spies because he has elite speed as an edge rusher. He does a great job on film stalking the quarterback and does not allow them to escape. He can line up as a linebacker and he can blitz inside as well. He can do everything, and I think he would be a great project to work on. Will he be a great right away? It is tough to say, but this is a guy I'm t- I'm ranking high because I know what I could turn him into as a coach. All right. What are his strengths? Very quick, you know, on tape. Fake outside to inside rush. He'll fake the outside, boom, hit you with an inside swim move or something. Spin move. He's going to hit you with something, and it's going to be nasty. Okay, because of his elite speed on that least tape that I saw. Good rip move, great bend. Hit you with a good bowl rush, good block shedding, elite edge speed, which I love to see. Great potential. Weaknesses. He's very raw and he needs to piece everything together. If he can do those two things, man, I can tell you, I think this guy would be a top 10 edge rusher in the NFL. You know, if he can get all this going, you know, this guy could be a hell of a player. But the coach needs to be patient and work with this guy. Here's his breakdown, and we'll take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Will McDonald. Six foot three, 239, 34-inch reach. Now, I know what's weird. He has literally the same weight and same arm length as Derek Hall, just one inch taller. Here's his notes. This kid has a very large pass rushing arsenal. He has a good, real good jump, rip to dip move. Another one of those guys. He has great bend around the outside. He also does a good swipe to rip inside move. He has the capability of hitting blockers with a nasty spin move as well. He can line up on the inside or even play some linebacker at times. He may be one of the most versatile players in the draft because he can even drop into coverage. He can do all three things on the line, plus he has a phenomenal pass rush arsenal. So what are his strengths? Large pass rush arsenal. Jump, rip to dip move, great bend, swipe to rip inside. Here you go. You see him right now. I think he's actually ripping inside. This is probably the outside. So if I had to guess, he's probably going outside and faking back around to the inside here. Nasty spin move and versatile. Again, he'll, he'll, he'll come this way, hit you with a spin around the edge. You know, vice versa. He'll do whatever. And versatility. You can do a little bit of everything. So, again, this is a guy I like as well. I like him. Here's his breakdown. Here's that rip move. Here you go. You're seeing it right here. Great. Great. Here's the next guy. Andre Carter in the 72 as a grade. Six foot six, 256, 33 inch reach, did not run a 40. Thing about this guy is big guy, large, right? Six six, 256. I want a longer arms. If you're six six, man, and you don't have those 35 inch arms. I, if you had 35 inch arms, man, I might just have you. Number one, you know, I very raw. We're going to go into his nose, but man, love the height. Just wish he had a little bit longer arms. That 33-inch reach, that's about average for the edge rusher here. This kid's a large guy who utilizes a swim move to his advantage. He gets a great jump off the line on occasion. He dips and rips around the edge, which is probably his greatest trait. Has great size and length. Has good bend for his size. He is capable of getting through tackles. He is versatile enough to play in coverage decently enough although I'd rather him play on the line. He is constantly trying to get after the passer. One thing I noticed, his arms look really long. I was wrong. See, this is, again, this is after the combine versus my notes. These notes are just off tape. You know, his arms look long. I was wrong. I think he may measure out really good, so interested to see what his official measurements are. Again, I was wrong about that, okay? Real tall, you know, might have long legs, but doesn't have the longest arms. 
Florida's guy, six foot six, good swim move, great jump off the ball, dips and rips, and good bend. Doesn't really have many weaknesses, to be honest with you. Here's his breakdown. You're going to take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Isaiah Foskey. Earned a 70 as his grade. All right. All right. Six foot four, 264, 34 inch reach. We're in a four, five, eight, 40. Not bad. All right. What are his notes? This cat has a phenomenal rip move that allows him to come freely around the edge. He does a good job hunting down the quarterback, but I want to see him develop more moves. He has good pursuit of the quarterback, but I want to see him hunt down the running back more often. His best ability right now is his pass rush, as he does not make a huge impact in the run game. Good pass rusher right now. Might be an elite pass rushing guy. Might be that guy you bring in on third down, you know, in a year or two, or maybe even this year. But, man, I don't know if he's an all-around great edge guy just yet. Great rip move. Chases down the quarterback. Good pursuit speed at the quarterback. Good pass rush. He's going to develop more moves and tighten up in the run game a little bit. Here's his breakdown. And we'll take a look at that. Here's the next guy, B.J. Ojolari. 6'2", 248, 34-inch reach, did not run a 40. Let's see his notes. This guy has a variety of pass rushing moves, which I love to say. He has a good spin move. Uses a rip and dip move and occasionally uses a swim move. So spin, rip and dip, and swim move. There's not much more you can do besides those three. He has great flexibility and bends around the edge. He does not quit and pass rush, even if he does not initially beat the blocker. He fights through extra blitz pickups. The main part I like about him is that he keeps fighting, has great bend, and uses a variety of moves. The only knock I have on him is that he does not seem extremely fast. 40 time can help his stock a lot. Didn't run a 40, okay? So what are his strengths? Variety of pass rushing moves. He uses that good spin move, the rip and dip move. You know, he has flexibility and bend. He fights through pickups, and he doesn't quit, okay? This guy does not quit. He, he plays, man. He fights. He does what he does, you know? And again, the variety of pass rushing moves is amazing. The weakness to me is he didn't seem that fast on film. And I wanted to see him run a 40. He didn't run a 40. So again, We'll just have to wait and see now. You know, th this is where, you know, some crazy things start to happen because, you know, he could be ranked really high, but he didn't run a 40. So we'll have to wait and see if he does his, con I mean, his uh, pro day, see what he runs there. Again, on his tape, he doesn't look fast. Okay, so that's that. Here's his breakdown, and we'll take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Lucas Van Ness, earned a 70 as a grade. Six foot four, 272, 34-inch reach, and a four five eight. Pretty dang good speed for his, his, you know, his height and weight. This kid is a guy that is going to be listed as an edge, but I would argue he is more of a defensive tackle than an edge rusher, although he can do both. Okay, again, he can do both. I would argue, though, I would like to see him play probably that DT slash DN role, not always on the end, you know, a 3-4 DT DN kind of a guy, guy that can line up at the DT or on the edge every once in a while. He can do a little bit of both. Okay, so I'd love for him to be in that role. We'll see if he goes to that system. He may be one of the most versatile linemen coming out of the entire draft. He seems like a real powerful guy. He has the ability to beat linemen with power or with a rip move. He is not a great finesse rusher, but he can use his ability to get around the outside on occasion. He is good in the run game, especially when lining up in the inside. He demonstrates some good fight when lining up in the inside as well. If a team is looking for a versatile player to play on the line, he may be the guy. Inside, outside, DNDT. Edge rusher, whatever that you want to call him, he can do it all. Strengths, he's versatile. He's powerful. He has a good rip move. You know, he's good in the run game. He fights through double teams. And he's good on the inside. I, I would almost argue he's better on the inside. You know, that's just me. Weaknesses. I feel like, again, when we consider him an edge rusher here, which we are, a weakness is I feel like as an edge rusher, he is better on the inside than he is on the outside. All right, that's me. That's my belief. You know, DT or a DN, in my opinion, not necessarily an edge. All right, again, does not use finesse often. He doesn't use finesse often. He's much more of a power guy. But hey, again, I like it. So we'll wait and see what happens. Here's his breakdown. More than welcome to take a look at that. But I mean, look at this guy. Look at this guy. He is a brick. Okay. You want to talk about a guy that's powerful. Just look at him. He's a strong guy. 
Okay, and and again, we'll wait and see how he can translate the NFL. Just because you look like this doesn't mean anything. But man, is he jacked? Let's see the next guy. Here's the next guy, Byron Young. They're in the 70th grade. Now there's two Byron Youngs. This is Alabama Brian Young. Byron Young. Okay, six foot three, two fifty one, thirty three inch reach. We're in a four four three. Holy shit! Did he fly up my board when he did that? Six three. 251, 33 inch reach, around 443. Not only was his tape good, man, he was fast. This kid plays both inside and outside on film. He is quicker on film, so I'm interested to see what his four to time is. Damn, did I nail that one? <laughs> did I nail that or not, ladies and gentlemen? He's seen fast on film. The guy comes out and runs a 443. He does a good job pursuing the running back from the opposite side. Again, that shows you his speed, which shows me his speed. He uses a rip move often to beat blockers in the run game. The main thing I noticed was his quickness in the film. Fast guy, you know, able to play inside and outside. A lot of potential here. Inside and outside. He's quicker on film. He was quicker on the 40, 443. He's fast, right? He has speed. Uh, you know, pursues a running back well. Okay. Again, really good there. Okay. Again, he, he's able to chase people down. It all comes back to speed. And good rip move. Okay. Really good rip move. Weakness was pass rush, okay? Again, not the greatest pass rusher. You know, play him a DT, play him on the edge. He's going to stop the running back. Not a pure pass rusher. He can improve in this area for sure. Doesn't mean he's going to be bad. Just needs to work on a few, you know, get some more moves and whatnot. Here's his breakdown. You're more than willing to take a look at that. There he is, tackling the running back. Here's the next guy. Earned a 68 is grade, Miles Murphy. Six foot four, 268, 33-inch reach. Didn't run a 40. This guy has great size and has good bend of the hips and flexibility to get around the tackles. He is an interesting prospect because I love his size, but he is going to have to ha have a good combine to be considered a top-tier edge rusher. Ten he tends to take wider loops to the quarterback to get pressure on them. He lacks different pass rushing moves, as he tends to just post his hands on the tackle and work his way around them. I would have loved to see some rip, swim, and even spin moves. Murphy is a large guy, so I hope that he you know measures out well. You know, with his, you know, I was sorry about his, you know, uh, physicals and whatnot, you know, meaning his 40, his three cone, his 10 yard split, all that stuff, you know, but uh, measure out well and have a good combine. Now, again, he didn't participate in a 40, so that just shows you that. His film in the run game was good as well, but it was not elite either. He could be a player that gets, you know, seven to nine sacks a season and have a limited role in the run game at the next level from the film I watched. If he has a great combine, my thoughts may change. Didn't really participate much, okay? So what are his strengths? Good bend and flexibility, weaknesses, lax moves, and wide loop to the quarterback. And people are going to say, oh, why does that matter? Well, here's the thing. Let's pretend Miles Murphy here is the offense tackle, and my red laser right here is an edge rusher trying to get around his outside. Okay, if I'm the quarterback right here, where his, let's say his helmet is a quarterback and his body is an offensive tackle. If I'm trying to get around him, Okay, and I take a wide loop because guys, I can run all the way out here, right? And and that offensive tackle is gonna let me run all the way out here. Because you know why? If I run all the way out here and take this wide loop, you know what's gonna happen? Quarterback, he's gonna have to come step up right here and step right up and keep running. Okay, he's gonna be off to the damn races. So if you take a real wide loop, man, man, oh man, is he gonna step the hell up and take off in that loop you're giving him? The offensive tackle job is just to blow you aside. Just wash you out, and there's going to be a huge hole right between the tackle and guard. So taking a wild loop is not always a great thing. It could work. You can take a real wild loop, get to the quarterback, congratulations, maybe apply pressure from his backside. But, man, it's not what I like to say. You know that That's not the main thing I want to see you do to get to the quarterback. Here's his breakdown. Here he is using a little bit of rip move here, it looks like. Okay, let me know what you think. Here's the next guy, Nolan Smith, 6'2", 238, 32-inch reach, 4'3", 40. Okay, let's see what we got. This kid is pretty quick from the film I watched. He tends to push on tackles rather than trying to go around the tackle. He does a pretty good job engaging and disengaging with blockers. He has the ability to make a wide loop around the tackles, but I think he may lack flexibility to take the sharp angle to the quarterback. Smith also does a pretty good job trying to stay square to the ball carrier. My biggest knock on Smith is his lack of pass rushing technique. He's a very raw prospect. He is quick and can get to the quarterback, but he lacks the ability to beat defenders using a variety of moves. I want to see him use a swim move, rip move, and swim move, spin moves, but he has to do a better job developing more moves to be able to do this. So again, 
What's his what's his strengths here? Quick on tape. Then he runs a 43940, which confirms it. He's able to engage to disengage. Pop, swipe, pop, swipe, pop, disengage, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Hopefully this makes sense. Some players, sometimes you engage to disengage. That's the best thing you can do. Pop them, then get the hell out. And he stays square. Weaknesses. He's a raw prospect. He is. That's just the damn truth. Like it or hate it. That's the truth. I'm not going to sit here and lie. That's him. Okay. He lacks moves, like I said, and he takes wide loops to the quarterback. I just explained that to you. Hopefully you understand what that means now. Okay. He does take wider loops. I don't really love it. Okay. I want to see a nice sharp angle. Hit him with the rip. String angle to the quarterback. Don't run around them because he can't beat them. Dip, rip, string angle to the quarterback. Just smash my hand, perform a dip and rip. I wish you could have saw that. Here's his breakdown. Let me know what you think. Here's the next guy. Keon White earned a 68 as a grade. Okay? Here's his measurable. 6'5", 285, 34-inch reach. Didn't run a 40. All right. Big guy. 6'5", 285. Okay, big guy, big guy right there. And slightly above average arms to length too. So all around pretty all right. This kid seems like a power rusher. He bull rushes most tackles back, but he can also do a job splitting double teams. Bull rush, bull rush, bull rush. You want to double team me? Screw you. I'm going to split the double team. Screw you. On occasion, he uses a spin move to get free. He does not quit, and he tends to attack the passer. Strengths, power rusher. He bowl rushes. He's able to split double teams. He uses a spin move on occasion, does not quit, and he can play inside and out. Weakness, lacks the, lacks the finesse moves. Here's his breakdown. You're more than look at that, and look at this guy. Big, long-ass arms, big, tall guy, 6'5", going to hit this guy. Ball might pop out after this. Here's the next guy, Byron Young. The other Byron Young, 68 as a grade, Tennessee. Six foot two, 250, 32-inch reach. This kid's interesting to watch. He has one of the best jumps off the line I've ever seen. He is super explosive off the snap and demonstrates great bend. I want to emphasize the burst of speed he has off the line. It is phenomenal. That's not all. He can also shoot the inside gaps. He has a good rip and dip move. He can run stunts a lot, and he gets to the quarterback. He can line up inside or outside. The one down I saw with him is that sometimes when he gets too fired up, he loses his contain, right? Oh, I want to set that quarterback. I want to set that quarterback. I want to set that quarterback. Goes in, loses his contain. You know, guy gets to the outside. So sometimes he loses his contain. Guy has a lot to work with. This guy has a lot to work with, a lot of upside. Great get off, super explosive, great bend, and run stunts. Rip and dip. That's not supposed to be tip and dip. It's supposed to be rip and dip. Move. Plays inside and out. Weakness loses contain at times. Here's his breakdown. You more than want to take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Isaiah McGuire. Under 68 as a grade. Here's his notes. Six foot four, 268, 33 inch reach, 47640. This kid is one of the sleepers. I actually like his film. He is the first guy I have watched at the bottom of my watch list that demonstrates different pass rush moves and the ability to actually get to the passer and stop the run game. That's a jack of all trades, ladies and gentlemen. Is he going to be a superstar or an all-star? I have no idea. But is there some things to is there some things to like about his game? Absolutely. He is going to be a low, low, low player on most people's boards. But because of his film, I'm going to rank him higher than other analysts. The main thing that is going to decide his career is coaching, fit, and if he's even ever given an opportunity. But I'll tell you something. I like his tape. Strengths, good pass, rush variety, good in the run game. Doesn't have many weaknesses, a lot of in-between. Here's his breakdown, and we'll take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Zach Harrison. Earned a 67 as a grade. Six foot five, two seventy four, thirty six inch reach. Those are the longest arms in the entire draft. You know, at, at this position, at least thirty six inch reach. This kid's able to poke the ball loose from the quarterback when he gets to him. He has a nice dip and rip move around the edge. He does not have the greatest pursuit speed. 
He does a great job chopping at the ball to knock it loose. He can line up on the inside or outside, which gives him good versatility. He has a pretty good bowl rush move, but also does a great job batting balls down at the line of scrimmage when he is not able to get through. So what are his strengths? Big guy, 6'5", 274. Long arms, 36-inch reach. Hopes the ball loose. Dip to rip move. Inside and outside you can line up as. Good bull rush move, and he bats balls down. There's really no weakness. There's a lot in between. Here's his breakdown. You might want to take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Colby Wooden. Earned a 67 as a grade. Six foot four, 273, 33-inch reach. Did not run a 40. This kid seems longer than life on film. He does a pretty good job shutting off blocks to attack the running back, but he lacks pass rush moves. He seems to try to beat tackles on his third or fourth move rather than using a move in the beginning. He has versatility because he can line up inside and outside. There are times I see him fight through double teams, which is important. So, again, this is a guy that's going to fight. You know, he's not going to quit after the first try. He's going to keep fighting, 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 fighting. The issue is I'd rather see him try to do a good move right away rather than, you know, try to win with his God-given talent to start. So what are his strengths? He sheds off blocks, he's versatile, and he fights double teams. Weakness, pass rushing. Okay, again, not the greatest pass rusher. Here's his breakdown. You want to take a look at that? Here's the next guy, earned a 67 as a grade. Nick Hampton, six foot two, 236, 33 inch reach, ran a four five eight four. That's pretty dang fast. This kid's an interesting prospect. There was not much tape I could find on him, but he does a good job pursuing both the quarterback and the running back. Interested to see what his forty time will be. He does drop into covers on occasion, which shows his versatility. Which tends, to, when he rushes, I should say, he tends to take a wide loop around the tackle to get to the quarterback but does not demonstrate elite bend, okay? So, again, this is another one of these guys. Uh, good pursuit, you know, he pursues very well. Uh, drops into coverage, but, again, his weakness is not elite bend, wide loop to the quarterback, and pass rushing again. Here you go here, looking like maybe a little bit of a rip move here, trying to throw one of those on, coming around the edge. But, again, not not an elite edge rusher for sure. Here's his breakdown. You're more than willing to take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Tuli Tivapolo 2, 65 as a grade, 6'3", 266, 32-inch reach. I'm sorry if I butchered his name. This kid seems like a balanced player. He has a good rip move to beat some tackles around the edge. He seems a little slow for my liking, though, and does not have the bends I typically look for, uh, you know, for an edge rusher. He was productive in college, but I do not think we will see this immediately translate to the NFL. Lacking bend and speed is going to hurt his stock. I am interested to see his 40 time. The one bonus for him is that he can play in the inside as well, which gives him versatility for a team that may use him that way. Now, again, he didn't run a 40. So, again, if he ran a good 40, you know, I could be sitting here and be like, you know, hey, you know, he, he kind of shunned some of my thoughts. But, again, he, not the bend that I like to say and not great speed is definitely going to hurt, okay? Um, so what are his strengths? He's balanced. He can do a little bit of everything. Pass rush, you know, a little bit of the run stopping, a little bit of everything. Uses a good rip move, plays inside and outside. His weakness is a lax elite speed on tape. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't get to confirm that with a 40, didn't run one. Lax bend, lax pursuit. Again, I think that all comes back to speed. Here's his breakdown. You're more than allowed to take a look at that. Here's the next guy. I'm sorry if I butcher his name. Edito Miwa Adabawari. All right, I'm going to try my best. Edito Miwa Adabawari. Let's hope that's right. Six foot one, 282, 33 inch reach. We're in a 44940. This kid is either going to bull rush the lineman or run around the tackle. There are not many pass rushing moves in his arsenal. He does show that he can blow back blockers or go around them. He is not super quick on film, which concerns me with him chasing down running backs. All right, so that's Adebowori. Uh, You know, what are his strengths? He can bowl rush, and he gets around tackles. Weakness, latch running back pursuit on film, latch moves, run stuffing. Here's his breakdown. You're able to take a look. Here's the next guy, Thomas Nkoum, earned a 65 as a grade. Six foot two, 262, 33 inch reach, we're in a 46640. This kid was originally listed as a linebacker for me, but I swapped him to edge after watching his film. He's mainly an edge rusher. He's pretty good at using the dip to rip move and does a good job getting to the quarterback. 
there was not much film on him, so it was hard to really scout him. So this is a guy I'm telling you right now, red flag, you know, could be a little bit off here with him. There wasn't much I could find, but what I did say, you know, was all right. You know, nothing great, nothing horrible. There wasn't much I could see, though, so tough to have an official evaluation on him. Not only an official evaluation, I'm sorry for the yawn, but also, you know, a ranking. How do you want me to rank him at the end here? It's going to be tough as hell. Okay, so we'll wait and see. So, what are his strengths? Good dip to rip move, gets to the quarterback, weakness, run stuffing. Okay, plain and simple. Here's his breakdown, and then we'll take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Jeremiah Martin. Now, again, he was a complete weird guy to try to find out his measurements. None of these are official. Six foot four, 261, no official at all. Arm length, there's nothing listed for his arm length at all. Not official or official arm length. So again, unofficially, he's 6'4", 261. I don't think he's going to be that big because tend to be when you find out that they don't measure, it's usually that they're smaller than they claim to be. So again, I wouldn't be surprised if this guy's 6'2", 6'3". We'll wait and see until his official measurements come out. But again, right now, unofficially, 6'4", 261. No arm length is mentioned. This gives an all-around all right prospect. He has pretty good swim move and does a good job swiping hands away. Better in pass rush than the run game. Okay, so what are his strengths? Good swim move, swiping the hands away. Weakness, run stuffing. Here's his breakdown, and we're going to take a look at that. Here's the next guy under 65 is his grade, Yaya Diaby. 6'3", 263, 33-inch reach, 4'5", 140. This kid can play inside and outside. He's also pretty good at running stunts. He's a pretty good... He's pretty good against a run, but would not consider him an elite or even a uh, you know, pass rushing edge rusher. Okay, that makes sense. He has decent all-around production from the inside. So what are his strengths? You know, he can play inside and out, although, again, I think most of his production, as I said, was from the inside, and he's good at running stunts. His weakness to me was his pass rushing. Here's his breakdown, and we'll take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Robert Beal Jr., earned a 63 as his grade. Six foot three, 247, 34-inch reach, 44840. All right. This kid seems like he could be a good contain edge kind of a guy, but not an elite edge rusher. He is pretty quick and on occasion gets great jumps off the snap. But that is the best chance at getting to the passer. His quickness is good, but he does not demonstrate the use of any pass rushing moves. All right, so what are his strengths? A contain kind of a guy could be used good and contain. He's quick, good get offs. Sometimes, okay, he works sometimes. Weakness, he lacks moves. He's not an elite edge rusher, at least just yet. Not a great run stuffer, not a great pass rusher, right? He's a guy that's going to contain, he's quick. You know, I think very early in his career, at least, may come in for, you know, a few plays a game, but definitely not going to be an every snap guy. Here's his breakdown, and we'll take a look at that. Here's the next guy, Mike Morris, earned a 62 as his grade, okay? Six foot five, 275, 33 inch reach. Tall guy, tall guy, not great long arms, pretty heavy. All right. This kid will use bowl rushes and swim moves on most of his pass rushes. He's another power rusher. He's not going to beat many blockers with finesse. I think he has a tough mountain to climb to be great at the next level. So, what are his strengths? He can bowl rush, he uses a little bit of a swim move. He's a power rusher. Weakness, he doesn't really use finesse moves. He's not a great run stuffer, not a great pass rusher. He's just another one of those guys that could be a role player. Here's his breakdown. You might want to look at that. Here's the next guy, KJ Henry, six foot four, 251, 33 inch reach, ran a 46340. This kid's an interesting prospect. His stats look pretty good, but I do not love his film. He did not show pass rushing moves, nor did he showcase his physical traits on the film that I got to say. I can drop into covers on occasion, but I was not impressed. Okay, so what are the strengths? He didn't drop into coverage. You know, that's something that he can play on the edge. He can drop into coverage a little bit. Versatility, I guess you can say. Uh, weakness, not a great pass rusher. Does that have many pass rushing moves. Physical traits are not really there on tape. Uh, doesn't really, not a great run stuffer. And he doesn't really fight. You know, he doesn't fight double teams. Fight after he initially gets stopped. It's just kind of like, he, you know, he tries to go and then stops. And that's basically it. And we're going to take a look at this. And here's our last guy, Bretton Cox Jr. Earned a 62 as a grade. Six foot three, 250, 33 inch reach, ran a 48240. 
This kid demonstrates the ability to get to the passer on occasion and contain the run. But he does not do anything special. It seems like his production has came off of his God-given talent, but he does not show any passer's moves to get to the passer, just his athleticism. He does show a good spin move to disengage from a block and get to the running back. Okay, so what are his strengths? A nasty spin move. You know, that's what I saw. Real nasty. Helps him disengage. Weakness. Not a great pass rusher. Doesn't have great pass rusher moves yet. Doesn't have great pursuit. And I mean, that 48240 shows you that. You know, doesn't really fight or split double teams that well. And it relies on his God given talent right now. Hopefully, he can add something to his arsenal. Here's his breakdown. You're more than welcome to look at that. All right. Here's the 2023 edge rush, rusher rankings according to the grade scale. This is the order that they just got listed as. So, Will Anderson Jr., Tyree Wilson, Felix Hall, McDonald, Carter, Fosky. Ojolari, Van Ness, Young, Murphy, Smith, White, Young from Tennessee, McGuire, Harrison, Wooden, Hampton, uh, Tooley, uh, Adamimba, Thomas, Martin, Diaby, Beal, Morris, Henry, Koch Jr. Okay, those are the top 27 in the order according to the grade scale, not my personal analysis. Now let's go to the next slide. Here is the 2023 draft compared to the 2022 rankings via the grade used in last year's scale. Okay, so this is comparing grade scale to grade scale. The same scale, how do they add up? Well, Kayvon Thibodeau ranked the highest out of last year, out of both years, I should say. According to grade scale, Thibodeau was going to be the best edge rusher out of everybody. Then Hutchinson, then Anderson, then Wilson, Ojabo, Johnson, Carl Aftis, Walker, Uzama, Hall, Williams, McDonald, Moffey, Carter, Sanders, Epichetti, Foskey, Ojolari, Van Ness, Young, Bonito, Murphy, Smith. This is according to the grade scale, okay? This is not my personal analysis. This is based off of what the scale says, the unbiased source. Here's the 2023 drafting compared to 2022 rankings via my personal analysis, okay? Taking last year's rankings and putting this year's rankings compared to last year's. Jermaine Johnson's still my number one. Okay, he was my number one last year. I can't change that. So he's going to be number one out of all the guys last year. So in the same order from last year. Now I'm just slapping this year. Are the guys from this year better than the guys from last year? Well, I got Johnson one, Hutchinson two, Thibodeau three, Trayvon Walker four. Yeah, I'm doing it, ladies and gentlemen. Clean sweep for last year's draft class. Give him a round of applause. Trayvon Walker is a freak of nature coming out of the draft. I like Trayvon Walker a lot. You know, I, I like Will Anderson Jr. I like Tyree Wilson. I think Tyree Wilson has a lot of like, huge arms. But to compare these two guys to the guys from last year, I don't know if they're going to live up to last year's draft class at all. So I'm not putting them there. I, that's just me. Maybe I'm wrong. But, hey, this is my take. Tyree Wilson, you know, then George Karloftis, Uzama, Ojolari. That's B.J. Ojolari. Hall, Carter, Williams, Ojabo, McDonald. Murphy, Van Ness, Foskey, Young, Smith, Moffey, Sanders, Harrison, McGuire, Ebiketti, Bonito. There's my top 25 in my personal analysis over the last two years. And here's my final ranking. This is the moment everyone's been waiting for. Who's my top guys this year? Well, here's my ranking. Will Anderson, number one. And I'll be honest with you, it's somewhat close between him and Tyree Wilson. It's close. Three to, you know, three to six, three to seven gets a little bit tighter. You know, Uzama, Ojolari, Hall, Carter, McDonald, you know, those are very, it's a tight race between those guys there, okay? Take them out every May. Miles Murphy, I'm lower on Miles Murphy the most. I, I just, again, big, tall guy, has a lot of potential, didn't really like his tape. Lucas Van Ness, again, he's the one that could shoot up my draft board, but again, when we say edge, I'm not saying he's not the best player here. I'm saying he is my ninth-ranked edge rusher. As a DT, he may be the best DT in the draft, the end of the draft, you know. But again, as an edge rusher, purely as an edge, what I define as an edge, he ranks 9. Foskey, 10. Byron Young, 11. Smith, 12. Harrison, 13. McGuire, 14. Byron Young, 15. Wooden, 16. Tooley, White, Diaby, Adabori. Hampton, Martin, Incum, Beal, Morris, Henry, Cox. Now, I'm going to return to you guys and give you my final thoughts and answer some fan questions. All right, that is it. We went through eight pages of notes. A long one, ladies and gentlemen. It was a long one. 
But now, the moment of truth. Some of the questions that you guys asked me. And again, I kind of just mentioned that again, but maybe if you just skipped here, I'll just say it again. The main question I have, how does this draft class, edge rushing-wise, rank up to last year's draft class? And again, if you watch my final, I mean, my, you know, my 2023 compared to my 2022, according to my personal analysis and my grade scale, you can see that last year's top dogs, in my opinion, are better than this year's top dogs. But this year definitely has more depth. I mean, hell, I scouted 27 guys this year that made the top 100, 100, 100. Okay, that, that's what it really is. So there's a lot of depth. You know, there's a lot of guys. There's a lot of rotational guys. There's guys that can play DN. There's guys that can play DT. There's guys that can, hell, can play linebacker. But again, my grading, my rating at the end of the day, and when I rank him at the end, is based on who's the best edge. And I truly feel like at last year and this year, my favorite edge rusher prospect has been Jermaine Johnson. After Jermaine Johnson is Aiden Hutchinson. After Aiden Hutchinson, it is, uh, you know, I said, I... Uh, Shoot, I'm forgetting his name now. Kayvon Thibodeau. After Thibodeau, it's Trayvon Walker. After Kayvon Walker, I mean, Trayvon Walker, it's Will Anderson. After Will Anderson, then it's Tyree Wilson. I like Tyree. Tyree might shoot up my boards a little bit. But those are the top six guys, you know, in the last two years. I just feel like it's all last year, then this year. You know, and again, maybe I'm wrong, but hey, we'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Again, our uh, you know our 32 GM content creator mock draft is Saturday, April 15th at 4 p.m. Eastern. Can't wait to see some of you there. Let me know what you think. Here's my ranking. I want to hear what you think. Give me your thoughts. We'll see you guys soon. Peace. We are built better.